uh, we want to uh, take a look at how much of the sun's mass is converted to energy for the solar constant that we uh, observe at the Earth. In a previous uh, lecture, we talked about the solar, we came up with a value for the solar constant. And in the process that we used for a calculation, we came up with 1,370 watts per square meter. So at the distance of the Earth from the sun, the amount of power falling on any square meter at that distance from the sun is 1,370 1, watts. To uh, figure out how much of the solar mass is being converted to energy for that solar constant, we need to uh, find something that we might want to call the, the energy per second. And uh, what we mean by that, so let's say the sun is out there, here's the energy in the form of light coming to the Earth, Earth's radius R. And we can figure out what the total amount of power is that's being intercepted by the Earth is if, if we think of a disk having the same radius of uh, the Earth, and the radius of the Earth is 6,371 kilometers. So the power that would be falling on that disk, the power from the sun being intercepted by the Earth, would be the solar constant times the area of the disk, pi r squared. And uh, that would then become the 1370 with a pi and the radius squared we'll write this in terms of meters so it would be 6371 times 10 to the 3 meters that's squared so uh, the meter squared in the solar constant and the meter squared from this area of the disk, they cancel, so we're just left with watts here. That's the total amount of power that is uh, falling on the disk. It's the total amount of power intercepted by the, by the Earth. Now, watts is joules per second. So we could put in here joules per second. One watt is equal to one joule per second. So now what we could say is the energy per second that's falling on that disk is going to be this number in joules. Joules. We're, we're just kidding considering per second now, so we're showing the energy per second falling on that disk would be uh, that uh, large, large amount in terms of uh, expressed in joules. So to figure out what the mass of the sun that's being burned, that's being converted to energy, we go to the famous equation E equals mc squared. This is what we're going to use for the energy. So if we solve this for, for the mass of the sun that's being converted to provide that amount of energy at, at the Earth, the uh, mass would be the E over C squared. And in our case here, that will be the 1370 times pi times the radius of the Earth squared that's in that's in joules divided by the speed of light squared
So if you work this out, you'll wind up with uh, approximately 1.94 joules per meter squared per second squared. That's from there. And uh, you know that a joule is an energy. And if you think of kinetic energy, one half mv squared, you can see from this that the kinetic energy measured in joules is equal to a mass times uh, a velocity uh, squared, which is meters per second squared. So this is equal to 1.94 um, kilograms velocity squared meters squared per second squared. So all I did was I put this in for the units of joules and that's per meter squared per second squared. And as you would expect, the mass turns out to be in kilograms. So we get 1.94 kilograms. So that is how much mass of the sun per second that is being burned to produce the energy that's in the solar constant over the entire, entire Earth. So uh, a better way to write this would be to explicitly say this is the mass per second of the sun that's being converted to the energy that's in the solar constant being intercepted by the earth. So uh, the solar constant powers life on earth and it's taking, to, to do that, it's taking 1.94 kilograms. So it's approximately two, two, two kilograms of the sun being burned per second to produce the solar constant at the Earth. Two kilograms of the sun burned. And when I say burn, I mean course a nuclear reaction to produce the solar constant at the earth.